Hello everyone, welcome back and to the start of our journey for my latest Cool Cats Crafts project. Um, we've designed a little kit for you to make a square album which has been designed to make the most out of your 8x8 paper pads and it has this lovely aperture front and then as you can see nice square pages inside. So this is called Morgana because we've already had Arthur, we've had Merlin, Guinevere, so we're carrying on that Arthurian theme. So in this first part what we're going to do is put together our cover, make our base pages and your spine. So if then if you want to go off on your own you can or you can wait for the rest of the videos and you can follow the handy PDF which you can then make each page as I have and there's still plenty of room and space for you to add your own little touches. So let's have a look at what we've got. In the kit we have some nice thick grey board and the aperture is already cut out for our front and you will also get a roll of tape. Now yours will be bigger, I've been using this one already and this will use for our construction as well. So if you never use the construction tape, it does come with a kit so you can have a go at this. And once you're done with this album, you will still have plenty of tape left over for making further albums. And we will also have uh, a thick piece of acetate. Again, I've designed it that it makes the most out of our eight by eight papers. And you'll see that probably in the decoration rather than this video. You'll we'll see how it then gives us this cover, like so. So let's get going and start using our construction tape. Now, this Cool Cats tape is um, perfect. It's strong enough to hold the album together, but it's a papery type texture, which means it cuts easily and gives us a nice um, finish. And also we can add our papers on top of it too. So it's nice and thin. You can tear it with your fingers as well. But I tend to use my scissors. So what I'm going to do is start off by just framing three sides of the reverse. So it's easy to show you on this back piece as our first one. Now to polish it, it's quite similar to my background. So what I'm doing is unrolling my tape just longer than one side. Now this is a square, so it doesn't matter which side I start on, but I've got the sticky side facing up. And what I'm gonna do is place, I'm gonna put my scissors in here, just stop it rolling, just to weigh it down. It is easier when you're not doing it on camera, you probably wouldn't need that. What I'm gonna do is place my gray board on its end, down, the center. So I'm just starting at the edge of the tape here. And let me see if I can bring you in. And it's just been placed down the center. Now there is a tool with the Cool Cats which helps you with this alignment. But I just go freehand. So I'm just keeping my tape now nice and taut. And I'm going to be tilting this towards that sticky bit. Like so. So we now have tape on two sides, but it's still like wings. And then I'm just going to carefully pull it back some more. Now, if it does tear, it's not a problem. So I'm just going to bring my third end up and place it down. And now I can cut it off. So it doesn't have to be exact. If you're a little bit short, like this. So you can see there's a little bit of grey board there. That's fine because it's going to be covered later on. And in fact, I do cut mine a little bit short so we don't have any overhang. And I'm just going to press it onto my grey board. As I was saying before we got to the end, if it does tear here on the corner, that's fine. Just um, stick it down and then just start again on the end. So if, you, if it's a success, you just cut it off. So you don't have to start the whole process again. 
And now what I'm going to do, I'm holding it in the air so that I can bring, come in with my scissors and I can cut out a little V. So I'm just working my way down towards the grey board. And what you've got to make sure is you take that little black piece of tape and discard it. Otherwise, it will stick to the next bit. And we're just going to work our way around to our next corner. Just pull it away. And then I'm going to flip it over and do the same. So we've cut away four little triangles at the corners. And this great board is thick. I wouldn't have been able to cut an aperture easily in this, so having it in the kit is just perfect. And with a thicker grey board, it does mean everything is sturdy, which is making this process. If you've never used the tape before, this is a great way to start. So as you can see, what I'm doing is stroking the tape onto the grey board. So that's making it stick onto the edge. You can sort of start to see the shape of the grey board. And what I do is I sort of go over that way and over this way a little bit. That's going to give me a nice crisp edge. And then I take my finger and thumb, and I start in the middle, and I just sort of press gently over. So we're starting to just smooth it over. And once you get proficient to this, you'll be able to do this a lot quicker than what I'm showing you now. And as I keep going, you'll notice the tape just sort of forms itself around. And then I start in the middle and just work out and just pressing it. Now I'm going to do this a few times, so if you didn't catch it, don't panic. So rub it on, I'm just tilting my hand, taking my finger and thumb, and I'm just rubbing across the edge. And then starting in the middle, I'm just sort of pinching down. And what you should get is a nice, smooth edge. But if you don't, what you can do is just take your bone folder or your Teflon tool and just iron it out. So if you do get a little crease, honestly, it is not end of the world. And you see now I can just do it a much quicker. And then you can just sort of iron it down just in case you've got a crease. But the creases won't matter because you're only going to be seeing a tiny little edge. So that is our back piece. And I'm going to do exactly the same with our front piece. I'm going to cover three sides. So this album cover is eight and a quarter inches by eight and a quarter, which is why then you realise that it does make the most of your eight by eight papers. So if you've got a pad of graphic 45 eight by eight, it'll be perfect. You'll definitely be able to make this entire album using just one pad. Or if you've got your um, Stamperia eight by eights, show you one of those as well. So again, we're just going round and we're cutting off those little triangles. Last one. I say, as soon as you've learned how to do this, it's the same for whatever size album you make. So again, I'm just gonna make sure it's stuck down. So I'll just pinch it over the edge and then press it down. Smooth it down, start taking it over the edge. Just run my finger thumb along and then press the whole thing down, smooth the edge, pinch and then smooth it down. Take my Teflon tool, this is great because it won't mark, 
like some of the nylon plasticky ones will leave a little shine on black but this doesn't so we've got it does look quite strange because we haven't got the black here so it looks wider here than here we so as i said it's an eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter and then we've got this one and a quarter um border so the aperture then in the middle we will want to line this as well so the way i do it i just take my tape and press it down and I'm just going to cut here. Now, if you have a black pen, um, what you can do is you can colour the corners ready. I'm going to show you a different way now as we've got the tape. And then I'm just going to bring it over, pull it tight and bend it over. So what I'm doing is lightening the top and bottom. So again, I'm going to stick it half on and down into the aperture. That was a tiny bit short. Just, you know, if it is a bit short, don't panic. We can always fix it later. So we've got a piece there. So I've cut it a bit too long, which is better than short. So what you can do is use your nail and work out where the edge is. And it's there. Flip it over. I'm just gonna tightly bring it through. So I have a little bit of wrinkle there. It'll just iron out, but it actually came out just by smoothing my finger. And then we're going to do exactly the same on the other two sides. So it's going to extend the tape. I can use my finger to mark. Probably can't see it because it's um, black in the video, but I could see it here. Bring it through. And the last one. Let's just cut it out of the way. And here's my finger. So this is now when it'll be up to you. You can take your black pen and just hide the corners because you will see these little corners. Or once you've got the tape, just cut some lengths of it and just place it diagonally. You will end up hiding any of the grey boards showing. So it doesn't need to be too much because you are only going to see a little tiny bit. Like so. Oh, and we need to do the back as well, don't we? one's a bit bigger but it doesn't matter at all I mean you get plenty of this tape in the kit and there we go let's just iron it all down So we've got our front and our back taped up. 
So all we need to do now is our spine. So I'm just going to take a little piece just shorter than my spine. I'm just going to tape the top. So I'm just placing it half on and half off it. And then I'm just folding it over. Okay. And repeat on the bottom. And again, just stick some of it onto, oh, I think I've got a little rogue corner from the previous cut. This tape is quite forgiving. There we go. So there we have it. We have untaped sides here. That's going to go to the middle. Then you should have black tape all the way around and black on the aperture. Now, if you're making another album because you've got so much tape left in the future, um, if you haven't got an aperture, you just need to tape those three. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, so now it's time to start putting the album together or the cover together. So what I'm going to do is come again, I'm taking my tape and I'm going to cut a piece which is about an inch above and below. So it's longer than my cover. So it's longer, if I bring it sideways, you might be able to see better. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it with my, am I going to be able to get it in shot? Just about. So I'm going to place my cover just to the right of the center line. And then I'm going to take my spine. Now this gray board is nice and thick, so let's turn it around. So it's going to be nice and easy to do this. The thinner the chipboard, the harder this is. So we're going to place it so the bottom left and bottom right corners are in line with the bottom left and bottom right of our cover piece. And I'm holding them all together and I'm tipping it up. Because what you want to do is create a space which is twice the thickness of your chipboard. So by doing this and then flipping over, you open it up, just no, not pulling apart, just teasing it apart so it's not stuck there. You have now got this black space down the middle and I'm just going to pull this tape up and over and up and over. Now, if you find that holding and flipping hard, Cool Cats do spacer tools as well, which you can, like a T-shape with a narrow bit down the middle, and you will want to use the um, quarter of an inch spacer tools for this one. And then just take some tape, because we've got that little gap in the middle, and just cover that piece. Okay. And that not only neatens everything up, but also has created a hinge. And we're going to repeat on this side. So I'm doing sideways this time so you can see. So an inch or so, you can see I'm not being precise. It's a lot longer than an inch this time. So I'm going to lift that and place it down on the sticky side. Turn it around. It's a bit longer this time, so I'm just going to rest it there. Oh, I can't rest it there. I'm going to hold them. So this time you want this non-taped edge towards this non-taped edge. Let me come around to the side. So the only reason this is more awkward is because I'm on camera. Normally I would just do it like this and bring it towards me. So I'm just going to move around the table. I'm going to line up those two bottom corners, lift, 
can come onto it and then bring it over. And then when I open it up, you can see it's all crinkled here. So, so all I'm going to do is just flatten it out and flatten it out. And then just bring this tape over and bring the tape over this side as well. And now, just to finalize it, we're just going to cover that space. There we go. And then lift. So that tape has now made us a lovely finish for our album and our spine is going to go in here now you may find when you make your spine you may have some black showing so what you can do again is take this tape and just cover the inside then you'll be guaranteed there's going to be no chipboard showing on your spine and as i said this is the tape method for it and you do get a whole roll and as we go through the album you will see i will actually use this tape for a few different um techniques as well so it's not just for the cover i will be using it again and then finally, what you would have is your piece of acetate, which you can glue there. So you can see it's just a little bit shorter. The acetate piece or the plastic piece is eight inches by eight inches, which is how we're going to make the most out of our paper because we can just use one inch strips. So that is how to assemble the cover. So the next bit now, we're going to put the cover aside. I'm going to grab our scoreboard, trimmer and our cardstock. And we're going to make the spine and the pages. So now I'm ready to make my pages and my spine system. So what I've got ready is my scoreboard and cardstock. I've got my trimmer ready to cut my card. Let's put these to the side for now. I've got some strong glue ready to attach it to the spine. Um, I do use strong glue just so the whole spine system, because you're going to put putting your pages on, you don't need to be torn out. So I do use glue for strength. I got my scoring tool and my Teflon tool. So this is perfect for getting those nice sharp burnishes as you go down and also um, just for folding and scoring as well. And the tape, you want some nice strong tape. So I'm using um, the Cool Cats' own uh, sticky paws. So it comes in two different thicknesses. You've got your six mil, but I'm going to be using the nine millimeter one. And you do get 50 meters in this. So it does go a long way. So some sticky paws. And then an optional bit, I am going to be doing a stacked flexi hinge. And there are these cool tools, which I've also got a video on in my channel. So I might even link that in the description below for you, for you to find how I use these. But I will show you quickly in the video as well. But there is a dedicated video just for these tools. Um, so yeah, these are optional because I'm going for three eighths of an inch um, space between my pages, which can be a bit tricky and intimidating. So they do make things a little bit easier. So there's going to be four pages in our album. So I'm going to cut the pages first, purely because I can use the leftovers then for my spine hinges. So I'm just going to cut two at a time. Now I need these to be eight and a quarter by seven and three quarters. So I cut them two at a time because you need two of these to make one page. And I know then they're going to be exactly the same size. So I'm going to just line the long bit 
along the top at seven and three quarters. And I said this makes the most out of our eight by eight papers, but it also makes the most out of our A4 because you don't need to trim this because it's already at eight and a quarter. There's one page. Seven and three quarters. So because I'm cutting both at the same time, if I'm a little bit off from my seven and three quarters, the pages will still be exactly the same width. So I keep them in their pairs. And again, th third lot. And the last two. So I've cut my pages, although I'm not going to be making my pages till after my spine. There we go. So I'm going to put these aside for now. I'm just going to grab some of these. So now we're going to make our spine. Now these tools that I was telling you about are brilliant because it actually tells you it's etched in it's hard to show on camera, but you can see it tells me on the top here how big to cut my pages. So the smallest one, which you always have to use, it says they're one and seven eighth. So I'm going to be cutting one at one and seven eighth. And then the next one is two and five eighths, which is etched in there. Not easy to show on the camera. Right. But the first thing I'm going to do is cut the height on my spine. They're going to help me with the scoring and the width. But I'm going to cut the height because that's the only thing with these tools I need to work out. So my pages are going to be seven and three quarters tall. So that would be where I would cut seven and three quarters. But if my pages are seven and three quarters and my spine are seven and three quarters, they're exactly the same size, which does mean... Um, the top and bottom could crash. So what I'm going to do is just go back or just the tiniest of tiny bit, just so that um, my seven three quarter line is actually showing. And just that tiny little bit less means that my pages are just a little bit taller and will slide onto my spine. So let's have a look. We wanted to cut one at one and seven eighth. So that's two inches, just back an eighth. And then this one, so seven and three quarters, just back a little bit. This one I'm going to cut at two and five eighths. So two and four eighths is a half an inch, so two and a half, and an extra eighth. So we can on the left hand side. It really doesn't, I don't have a dedicated side. I use both sides of my. Um, track and now my scoreboard. So, what you need to do now is score at half an inch and three quarters of an inch, and you can rotate and do half and three quarters again. And that leaves you a three eighth channel in the middle. And you can do the same with this one. But what you can do if I use my tools. So that was for the shortest one. And if I put that there, I will notice all the score lines actually match with those notches. So let's have a go with this one. So I'm just going to put my little... Um, I don't know what it is, a little plasticky bit in there. And then place my tool on top. There's a little line here, which is the edge of my paper. So you can check that your paper was the right size. Here we go. And then you just put your scoring tool inside every one of these notches 
and you don't even have to think about any of um, measurements or anything. It's just there. But a little tip, if you bring this one back and you just notch that third one and the fourth one, that'll give us a little area just to line up. I'm just notching those two. So it's not a score line. What I've done, I just marked two little notches. You can just about see them, I think. There we go. And the centre of this will lie when we do it inside there. So yeah, these tools, brilliant. And it does come, so if you want to do a six page album, you would just do the next one up as well. So I'm gonna put them aside for now. And what I'm gonna do is just score each of these score lines upwards. So I'm just gonna start off with my hand. And then go in with my Teflon tool. So just by hand first, just to get it going. And I say I have got a video where I just focus just on creating this spine, which will be linked below. So if you need me to go a little bit slower, have a look at that video. And then I'm just going to train each of these to come backwards as well. Just using my Teflon tool just to get those scores in. So what you've got in the end then is a U-shape, if I do it that way, a U-shaped piece of cardstock. So obviously the bottom is for my um, to attach. And then these two flaps are for my pages. And because we've added that extra score line in, it flexes. I would do exactly the same with this other one. And obviously this one is the smaller one. So the score line is going to be a bit closer together. I'm just going to train them going the other way as well. So that's what creates your flexi hinge. There we go. So we now have another one with that U shape with wings. And this then is going to stick in the middle. So the way I do it, I take it here so the base is on the top and I pinch those two together, which gives me just the base and I can line that between the two score lines. So let's do that now. So we're going to put some of my sticky paws on the back. And in between the two central score lines. Okay. So it's going up to that score line. And this score line. And I do have space in the middle for extra. There we go. And then for this one, it might be a little bit thick. Oh no, it's gonna be fine because we've got the three eighths this time, haven't we? Not a quarter of an inch. So the three eighth is a great size because sometimes you find your quarter of an inch um, spaces between your pages isn't enough, but half an inch seems quite a lot. Right. So we've taped up in between the two central score lines of the back of both. Now, 
we're going to turn them over and we're going to attach some tape to these half inch wings. on both of our spine pieces. Now be careful, you do not go onto your score line because if you go onto your score line, your tape is gonna be exposed when we add our pages and things are gonna start sticking together. As you can see, when I come up here, you can still see that score line there. And just to help later on, I'm gonna, Cut out just a little angle up to the first score line or on this side from that score line out depending yeah. and you can flip it over or from the score line out and that's just going to help our pages to slot on later just a little quick extra thing to do now which will help us a lot Later on, here we go. And now our spine is ready to go together. So I'm going to expose my double sided tape and I'm going to use just a little thread of glue as well. So the tape will hold it for now and it is strong. As soon as we put weight and things on, we do want our albums to last. We put so much work into them and they are keepsakes. So we're just going to use this glue. And as I said, I can see some score lines here. Which I can use to line it up. So then all my pages are equally distant. There we go. And we've got our spine system done. So you've got place now to put four pages on here. And we can attach this to our album. So I do this before I do my pages because it gives my spine time to dry and And get nice and strong. So let's take this off. And I set my album aside earlier. So let's bring it back. Oh, it's stuck on. Luckily, I hadn't put my glue on yet. But I hadn't pressed down, it was just placed so it hadn't quite stuck down. Phew. And so where we're going to place this is onto this bit in between. And you'll have a bit of space top and bottom. And I'm just going to bring mine to the left a little bit. So it's closer to my front cover than my back, which means I can put more things on the back, but also the image on page one will be closer to my cover, if that makes sense. So it's closer to my cover than it is to the back then, which means I can add more stuff in the back and through the aperture is not a big distance between the front and first page. So there we go. So then you can just put some weight on that and set it aside. I tend to just leave it. And the last little piece for this video then will be our pages. So I'm going to bring in my scoreboard again. Don't need my spine bits. So remember, we cut these at seven and three quarters and kept the eight and a half. Oh, sorry, eight and a quarter. So I'm going to put the eight and a quarter along the top for each of these pages. And I'm going to score at seven and three quarters. So this means now every page we have will be exactly the same page, uh, page, exactly the same size. 
So again, I'm keeping those two like cut together, together. So seven and three quarters every time. So on all eight of these pages. Those two together and those two. So that's my scoring then. And again, I'll be using my nine mil sticky paws. And this one's going to be quite hard to see. I think let's just zoom in a little bit. So where we've got our half inch score line, which is here, I'm replacing my tape. So again, just like when we did our spine, try not to get it to touch the score line. So you can come up to the score line, but not on top of it. Go. And you will do the same for the other six. So I may just save some time on the video and just show you one page. So they are going to be pocket pages, which means you'll be able to slide some photo mats inside for some extra space. But also the pocket helps us align, uh, helps us attach it to the spine. So what I'm doing now is just folding back the score lines. And then I'm just going to flip them over and you really want to give it a nice, good burnish. OK, so I'm using the sharper end so that I can get it nice and flat. The closer you can get this fold to stay there, the flatter your pages are going to be. So I'm going to really burnish it well. Take your time. This is why I'm only going to do one of the pages because this bit can take a bit of time but it's worth it your final result is going to be much better for it so the longer you take on this one now i'm going to use the smoother side just to sort of iron it down and say the flatter we can get them the better So we have, let me move all the scrap bits out the way. We have one with the tape at the top and then this one with the tape at the bottom. So what they're going to do is tape towards each other and that will create a pocket for us. So the way I do it is I expose a little bit of the tape and fold it back on this corner and do the same on the other corner. Making sure the tapes are opposite ends. Line up the left hand side with the left hand side and just attach. So we're only attaching a bit of the tape here, just pressing lightly, which means I can still move all this because all this is not adhesive and that side and then once these four are in place you can so just keep your hand on your paper to keep it nice and flat just pull this out and down i'm going to turn it around i'm going to repeat so i'm going to open it up expose a bit of the tape each side And this time, I'm going to fold from that fold up. And I'm sort of working in the middle because that's not going to stick. And then take it off to the side. And again, that way. 
There we go. And that is your pocket page done. And it's just a case of, then you take this off. So I'm not going to do it yet because I'm going to be making the rest of my pages and decorating them first. But if you skip to the last video and to watch me doing it, there'll be a video on how to put it together and doing finishing touches. You can skip to that one, but there'll be links below, hopefully, for each of the playlists. And then because we've angled these and we've cut our album, uh, our spine, just that little hair's breadth shorter, it will slide on easily, attach just short so you can still see that score line. So take off the tape, run some glue front and back, otherwise everything will fall out. You open up your pocket page, you slide it on and you stick it down like so. And then you just pull back the next one, do the same, pull back this one. The tape will be on the other side or you could have put the tape there if you want. And you just do all four pages. And that, let me bring it to number one so you can see a bit better, is how you assemble and create the spine and pages for a Morgana album. So I said, I will do videos now for, because it's not, it's not glued on. That's the only reason why it's not staying. There we go. I should have just left it on the fourth one. There we are. There we go. That is how to assemble your Morgana. But as I said, when I come to decorate, I will show you how to attach the acetate to there to get that final little touch. And as I said, with the kit, you also get access to this PDF, which has got all the cutting guides, all the scoring guides with instructions for each page, but with also spaces for you to add your own little details. And the papers I've chosen for this next one is the Graphic 45 Make a Splash. So there's one with Enchanted. Um, oh my gosh, I've forgotten the name of this one. Oh, Well Groomed. It's right there in front of me. And this is the one I was taking photographs for the PDF. And I may even show you one, how you can use eight by eight Stamperia papers as well. So each of those Graphic 45 ones use just one pad of the eight by eight collection. And then this one, Songs of the Sea, is a Stamperia one. And I use some um, eight by eight paper pad along with the eight by eight background papers to make this one, which is still not finished. I still got the finishing touches to add to it. So yeah, so your 8x8 papers will definitely be made the star of the show for this one. So I hope you've enjoyed it and you're enjoying the kit. And I can't wait to start sharing with you some page ideas to go inside. So see you all again soon.